You're very welcome along to Star Sports TV. It's episode three today. We have Bill Esdale and Luke Tarr uh, on racing. Goodwood and Galway coming up. We have Adam Russell talking the FA Cup final. We also have Flynn Gower with trading places. We have Hit the Tweet Spot. We've Hannah Baycroft visiting Mayfair Shop, no less. We have Golf with Blue Horseshoe, a 125 to 1 selection this week. We also have the World Snooker Championships. JB is going to give us his selections there. Uh, cricket with Ryan Sidebottom. We have William Kajani's politics. And we finish up with Betting People with Julie Collier. It's time for racing with Luke Tarr and Bill Esdale. How are we, lads? All good. Let's go to the chase here. Batash, right? This is this is buying money, I presume. You know, we're talking about the King George here. Um, best sprinter, more or less, that we have. What are we talking? Sort of two to five? Yeah, he's two to five favourite. He's one of those classic horses that bookmakers seem to love because he'll go off every t- odds on every time he runs. Looking for a fourth King George. Stradivarius made it four yesterday, but I'm sure he'll probably make it four as well. Um, everyone knows that I'm a huge fan of Liberty Beach. Six to one that he'll be for me each way. He's the future of sprinting in the country. And I will be looking to take on Batash with Liberty Beach. What do you do there, Bill? Do you take the, 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 the horrible each way and get involved and take on this superstar? Yeah, well, I, I do like Liberty Beach. She is good at Goodwood. That's the key. You know, she won that won there last year. Um, she's been beaten this season in races that have kind of fallen apart. She was third to Batash, putting her place at Ascot. No real logical reason why she should turn him over, but I think she'll rough him up. But he'll he'll win. I would have thought and Liberty Beach will probably chase him home. Yeah, and the unlikely event that you back Batash uh, for 100 quid or less, and it's beaten by a neck, pipped at the post or promotion, uh, you will get your money back to a one uh, as a free bet. We're going to talk about the Stewart's Cup now, which is obviously a, a much more open contest. Um, just looking at the betting here, we're roughly talking as like six to one the field here or so. Um, what do you like? Yeah, I think the Haas is short as five to one. Now looks plenty short enough, but that probably should have won at Royal Ascot. It was just a bit green. Went and won at Newby well. Beat Watan. Um, I back two in the race. I'll put up briefly. I back Watan, who's in twelve to one chance. Gave it nine pounds last time. I thought Nahar was match fit, and I thought that looked a big price. And I like a plum back to six. Um, ran well at Ascot. The silver woke him as well. Wide open affair. Twenty eight runners. A bookmaker's benefit. But the two for me will be Watan and the plum. Bill, this is your kind of race. Come on, nothing shorter than twenties, please. Give, give me a winner with a plum here. I mean, well, it's a race where I think three-year-olds have won three of the last five runnings, and hence there's been plenty of money for uh, Mark Johnson's runner. Uh, Meras. Meras, yeah, who's, who's, who's the unexposed three-year-old who looked very good. Um, Meras, the most likely winner for me, around eight to one. Uh, that, that would do at this stage, but... Um, I'm sure we'll try and find a cleverer one once the, once the decks are out later in the week. Yeah, I'm going to mention the goal we heard as well, which is the feature on Thursday. Star Sports has actually just priced this up. Mount Leinster, who bolted up in a maiden despite being as free as the wind earlier in the week. If he just absolutely, if he actually races, he's 12 to 1. I think he's a rock solid each way chance. Sophomore hurdler. You do have another selection later in the week as well, Bill. Uh, yeah, no, just a, a couple to, for Friday. I think Roger Varian could have a couple of horses run really well at big prices on Friday. He's got a horse called Invitational running in the 145, which fell in a hole over a mile. She'll be better, drop down to seven, and I think the 16s are available. I think she'll run really well. And the other one is in the Golden Mile, the big handicap on, um, on Friday. Um, he's got a cliff horse in that called Willie John, uh, who was well back to, in the um, mile handicap at, uh, at the Royal Meeting. I think he'll just run well at 20 to one. He's been gelded since that Ascot run, and he's been dropped another four pounds. But when they thought this horse was a Group 1 horse a year or so ago, He's um he just could be a big price at twenty to one. I just like it when as Bill says he's been gelded and he's dropped four pounds. I'd like to think he probably dropped more than four pounds for being gelded, Bill. That's a beautiful ending. Thanks for coming on, lads. No worries. Thanks, good chaps. Enjoy the week. Good luck at- and enjoy Goodwood. <laughs> it's time for football with Adam Russell. Adam was on predicting goals at St Mary's last weekend. You weren't wrong, Adam. Yeah, I'm not sure I'll be doing that too often in the Premier League, Johnny, but um, there was lots of goals at the weekend, so so good value for the punters in the goals markets. This weekend, obviously, is a lot different. RCB Chelsea Cup final, 5-2 to two the draw, 23-10 to 10, uh, Arsenal, 11-10 to 10 Chelsea, and OK, I'm not expecting a lot of goals here. What are you expecting? Um, I think, it, yeah, like I say, I think it'll be a tight game. Um, these two obviously last met in the FA Cup final in, in 2017, uh, with Arsenal winning 2-1 and, and Aaron Ramsey scoring a late winner. Um, this is uh, a record 21st final appearance for Arsenal. 
And two very it. young coaches. Yeah, exactly. The, the, a lot of the players in the squad have got cup final experience, whether it be the FA Cup final or the Europa League. So it should be a good game. Just to mention, I say by the 90s promotion, if you place a bet uh, of 10 quid or more uh, at any selected match, uh, you get a £5 free bet if there's a goal in the 90th minute or less. Are we expecting goals here? What's the goals market looking like? Or who are you expecting to score first? Or score in the, in the 90 minutes indeed? Uh, there's a couple that I like here, actually, Johnny. I think Christian Pulisic has been in great form since the restart. He was he was positively Eden Hazard-esque at Anfield last week. Eden uh, Hazard-esque, no less. Yeah, and I mean, that's a, a big compliment for a, for a player. So I think 17-4 to four for him to score any time seems like good value. Um, but my pick would be uh, Olivier Giroud to score any time uh, at 23-10. to 10. Runners so, fans will love that. Yeah, exactly. And he scored it on Sunday. He scored um, in the Europa League final last season. Scored in the 2015 uh, FA Cup final for Arsenal. Um, and he, he scores in big games, and I think he, he might score in this one. Give us your prediction. Uh, I'm going 2-1 Chelsea. Top man, Adam. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Flynn Garrett, how are we? Yeah, very well. Thanks, Johnny, and you, mate. I'm not too bad. How was the, the Premier League for Star Sports last weekend? I mean, the uh, Premier League was absolutely fine. Uh, Liverpool... Uh, winning that was a fine result for us. We actually uh, laid Leicester um, our eyes, so that result was okay. Um, also, we did Premier League handicaps at, at the start of the season, so our football trainers worked really hard at that. We priced the field up at 14 to 1, had Man City off scratch, and then the rest of the teams with plus points to make it a level playing field. Uh, we gave Sheffield United 63 points in that handicap, which is obviously a huge amount looking back now. They've outperformed massively and they've dotted up in that market. Uh, and then on the goals handicap, uh, Leicester won that. Uh, we, we gave them 41 goals and they scored loads this season. Obviously, Vardy being top goal scorer, which we also laid at uh, Mancy Post. Yeah, that's actually a bet I love. I know you laid England in the cricket as well against the Indies, but uh, what about this owner promotion? 10 grand uh, liability an owner can get, which I think is absolutely fascinating. Yeah, it's proved so, po- so um, uh, popular as well. No surprise. With, with, with a Goodwood and Galway this week. Um, so from 10 a.m. on race day, if, if you own a horse or if you're part of the syndicate, we'll lay you to win 10k minimum. Um, and then we'll and then we'll lay you a, a minimum further ten thousand on the show. So twenty grand on your own horse doesn't get much better than that. Come and bet it with us. I actually own a horse. I may be in touch. Come and call us up, Johnny, and we'll take you on. In like Flynn, top man. Now it's time for Hannah Baycroft. Hannah gets all the good gigs. She's only outside the Dorchester in Mayfair. So in just a moment, we're going to be meeting Head of Retail, Matt Davis, and he's going to be showing us the newly refurbished store. So Matt, tell me, when customers visit the shop, what can they expect? Well, firstly, they get a friendly welcome. Um, we've got really comfortable surroundings in Mayfair, and they would receive a um, good level of customer service with knowledgeable staff. Fantastic. So we've, obviously we can see it's been newly refurbished, can you show us some of the things we've got going on here? Yeah, so obviously in Mayfair we've gone with a slightly different look to the normal shops just for the spec of the area really. We've put in the latest technology here, um, touch screen TVs rather than having newspapers. We'll bring up the big race of the day there. We'll be able to take some chunks on Stradivarius this afternoon. We've now got five shops. Um, we've got Mayfair, we've got a shop in Woodley near Reading. We've also got two in Preston and uh, the newest shop that we've taken recently is in Kingswood, Bristol, which also has the latest technology and it's a fantastic shop fit. And are there going to be any new ones? Lots of irons in the fire. Hopefully we can get a few over over the next couple of months. And so we're, we're looking to push on with a retail business. So I've heard you've had some fabulous preview nights here with some of the jockeys, David Russell and Richard Johnson. How did they go? Yeah, really, really good fun. Um, we closed the shop early to make it private events. We invite our own customers from here and from online and the telephone business. Um, Davey is always great fun. Uh, Richard brings a, a more professional approach. Um, we've also had the Dog Derby preview at nights here as well, which is a slightly different clientele, but really, really good fun with lots of knowledgeable, um, both trainers and punters. So of course it's been tough on the high street. What precautions have you had to put into place? Well, we've made changes right across the retail estate. Um, and most of them are the same. We've got hand sanitizer, we've got masks for people that haven't brought their own, signs on the floor to remind people to keep their distance. And as we go through here, 
we've taken out half the seating so there's at least one metre between the seats. And we regularly wipe the tables down so they're clean. And as you can see here, James is behind the counter here. We put the Perspex um, shields in to protect both the staff and the customers. So there you have it, a newly refurbished Star Sports betting shop right here in the heart of London. I've been Hannah Baycroft and I'll see you soon. G'day golf fans. Well done to Michael Thompson, winner of the 3M Open last week, seven whole years after his first PGA Tour victory. So it just goes to show you anyone can win if it's their week on this PGA Tour. And it goes to show you to watch out for players who are trending well in lead-up tournaments. Michael Thompson had been trending well, he had been scoring well, and then bang, he comes in at a very big price. This week, the PGA Tour heads to Memphis, Tennessee, home of Elvis, for the WGC St. Jude Classic. This is an invitational tournament. Brooks Kepka won this last year. Daniel Berger won this two years on the bounce, and he's in some pretty sharp form at the moment. Blue Horseshoe loves Bernd Wiesberger at 125 to 1. He's a multi-time winner on the European Tour, and we think that's excellent value for money for such a talented player. To see who else Blue Horseshoe loves and why, check out the starsports.bet blog, and good luck. It's World Championship snooker time, not exactly as we know it, but uh, JB has taken on one, one of the legends of the game. This Friday sees the start of a World Snooker Championship at the Crucible in Sheffield. Judd Trump is 11 to 4 favourite with Star, with top industry price on Judd. Uh, he's had a fantastic season since he won the World Snooker Championship last year, winning six trophies. However, he's not looked quite so good in the last couple of events. And of course, he's got the curse of the crucible to break, by which no first-time winners ever come back and defend in the next year. So we're happy to take him on at the top of the market. Uh, in terms of what we laid in the office, we've laid Stephen Maguire at 100 to 1. He's now a 28 to 1 shot, having looked really impressive at the Tour Championship, and he could go well. Uh, in terms of our offers this week, we're going to have loads of specials up on site every single day. We're going to have highest breaks, um, match centuries, enhanced accumulators, as well as the usual outrights, quarter winners, etc. Um, we've also got an offer by which if you place a bet up to £50 and your player loses in a deciding frame, then we'll give you a £50 free bet back. Um, to bet again on a match of your choice in the, latter, in the later rounds. It's time for cricket with Ryan Sidebottom. You call it, Ryan. England won the test. Yeah, 2-1. Um, it was a great victory in the end. Some three brilliant test matches. West Indies played their part, but England were just too strong. Now it's Ireland v England. No marker there for Ireland. 1-9 to nine England to beat Ireland in this uh, international. It's going to be fascinating stuff. It's good. Look, don't underestimate Ireland. They've got some very good players. A lot have played in county cricket over here. Um, they played they've had te international cricket. Um, they've had a taste of it. So, look, don't underestimate them. But England, again, too strong. This ODI team is magnificent. And I, there's two picks. I've gone for Saqib Mahmood, a brilliant fast bowler. He's 4-1 to one to be wick leading wicket taker in the series. And I've gone for Moeen Ali, who is 16 to 16-1. Um, to be the leading run scorer just because he's a serious talent, great all-rounder and he's back on the big stage. Thanks a million for your time, Ryan. It's time for Hit the Tweet Spot and this week's winner, uh, Rich at Sylvie Conti. He only called it right. He basically said 7-4 seems good value for an able to win by over 2.5. She should have been 1-74 to 74, as it turns out. Just mention Star Sports in a tweet or reply to one of our tweets to be in a chance every week to win a pony free bet. That's 25 nicker. So it's politics of William Kajani. William, we know Joe Biden's going to win the US election, but who's going to be his VP? So this is one of the biggest facts to the election so far. Biden has committed to pick a vice presidential running mate by the first week of August. We have Kamala Harris as a four to six shot here at Star. Um, she would fit all the typical signifiers. Um, she is an African American woman. Biden's past to pick a woman. Um, does run a big state uh, centre there in California. Um, but it's a packed field, and there are other names in the hat. Susan Rice, second favourite at seven to two, could be a really big player. She was Obama's national security advisor knows her too closely, her and Biden would be very well aligned on foreign policy issues and it would give him probably a head start in trying to get the machinery of government working again. <laughs> ah, so this is my favourite, I kid you not, so far. Now, everybody here is masking up. Uh, it's mandatory now and not long for time. Her Majesty herself may be seen with a mask in public when she goes to Balmoral this summer we make it a nine to one on shot.
that she wears a mask, fight one and she doesn't. We've also got odds on the colour of her mask. Blue is a seven to four favourite, but white could be big at seven to one. Hi Johnny, this week's betting people is with Greg Miller, a man that I met when I went greyhound racing in Melbourne to the Melbourne Cup. At the time, he was the CEO of Sandown Park Racing Club. Now, he's deputy chairman of Greyhound Racing Victoria. He has travelled the world greyhound racing, including here in the UK. He's picked up invaluable experiences. And whilst the Australian model is very different to here in the UK, he has some brilliant words of wisdom, valuable lessons that we can learn from this man. I really, really admire him and I hope you enjoy the interview. Here's a trailer. In Australia, like everywhere else in the world, it's a numbers game. It's getting the support of the government. And the way you get the support of the government is the support of the people. So Grand Racing Victoria spent a lot of money, a lot of staff, a lot of money on making sure the integrity of our sport, the welfare side of our sport is number one priorities. Without that, we don't have the government's favour, we don't have the public's favour, and Grand Racing will cease. Thanks so much for listening this week and thanks to all the guys for coming in. We're on uh, sharpsportsbet.co.uk. You can obviously download the app or call us on 08000 521 321.